G'day mates, welcome to this video. Today I am honored to be with a good friend of mine, Taylor Armstrong, and we are currently chilling at the 10X Growth Con uh, in Vegas, and it has been an absolute blast. And so we thought we'd take the opportunity to um, kind of take advantage of the situation and do a little bit of an interview with Taylor Armstrong and talk about you know some of the success that he's had and, uh, and talk a little bit about his story and how this can help inspire you to take action and even draw some uh, really important tips to help you along your journey. So first thing, Taylor, thank you so much for being here, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh, Excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome to be together again. We used to work together in California um, selling solar. So um, let's just jump right into it. So um, Taylor Armstrong, for all those people who are watching right now, um, maybe you can share a little bit about your story, where you got started, and kind of how you got to where you are right now. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, thanks for having me on the show. We're stoked to be here at the 10X Con. Been getting some extreme value here. But yeah, so my story, I um, like Jordan said, I'm in sales right now. I do direct sales door to door for a solar company in uh, San Diego. It's called New Power. So I've been doing that about two years with that company. But I first got started in sales. Um, it was my first, after my first year of college, I was just dirt broke. I was, uh, I mean, I was going to the plasma donation centers. I've still got the <laughs> scar on my arm, oh, donating yeah. plasma. That's the only way I could afford my food. So I was driving there and getting my 20 bucks from donating plasma. <laughs> be able to buy some groceries for the week doing that. And so I was a music major at my school, which um, I know that's quite a, quite a different path than, <laughs> than kind of what I'm doing now. But as a music major, I was spending a ton of time just practicing. I was a percussionist, so I had to spend a ton of time practicing drums, practicing xylophone, all these different instruments. So the problem was I didn't have time to do any, I didn't have time to work at all when I was at school. And so I got to thinking, how can I make some money um, so I won't have to work during the school year and that way I can just spend all my time playing drums. Because mm. I want to play drums and I want to go mess around with my buddies. That's all I wanted to do at school. I don't want, I don't want anything to do with work. <laughs> and so, I stumbled upon this whole door-to-door -door gig. There were some guys just at my university, they were recruiting for a pest control company. Mm. So me and one of my best friends named Chandler, we both started checking out this pest control company. And they're like, oh, you can make make a hundred grand this summer, you can make <laughs> so much money, you're going to be able to you're, you know, work for three months and not know how to spend the rest of your money for nine months. <laughs> just like talking this the up. sales dream. Yeah, the <laughs> sales dream. Just promising it all this money and it got our attention because we were right out of high school and we're, we, we'd we never been making more than what, seven bucks an hour in southern Utah where we were from. And so it kind of took us by surprise and we started looking at it and they like hyped it up so good and we're like, you know what, that sounds sweet. Let's go make a bunch of money this summer. And it was in a different, they take you to different towns, different cities, so we really liked the idea of just getting away somewhere for the summer mm. and then just going all in and making a ton of money at something. And so we got into that. So we went to Dallas, Texas, sold pest control. It was a lot harder than I expected. Um, I mean, knocking doors in Dallas is super humid. We were sweating. Mm. I was asking for water from every other door. Just yeah. It was really hot. What I found was I was always kind of a, a shy kid growing up. I didn't like to talk to, interact with people much. And so really I wanted to do this as much for the money as to break through kind of my mental barriers with mm -hmm. not, with that fear of talking to people, with that fear of not knowing what to say. And so I think that's really what got me into that is the money and just breaking past those mental barriers that I saw. Mm -hmm. So I started in, uh, this whole door-to-door -door sales pest control did it in Dallas and I wasn't that good when I started I mean I probably was I at least stuck through the summer that's the thing about summer sales door-to-door -door. there's a pretty high turnover rate so you start with a team of maybe 20 30 people 
by the end of the summer your team's probably half the size just because people like people that start don't realize how tough it is and that it is hard work it isn't grind every single day mm -hmm. so i realized that luckily i did stick through the whole summer didn't give up on it which is why i'm still doing it today obviously but it was really tough thing to do and i wasn't i was probably near the bottom of my team that first summer in pest control of the guys that did stick out that full summer but yeah i just continued to grind i did it another summer after i served a mission for my church and then the next summer i had a buddy that was making a ton in the solar and he wasn't having to work near as much as i was so i mm. came and started the whole solar thing and really liked it just because I was able to interact. We set up meetings and we were able to interact a lot more with homeowners, so made pretty good money at it. So that's where I am today. So that's mm. kind of my background with it. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know, you've you've done a lot of good things for me, and you know, you've been a good example of you know someone who's really stuck it out because sales is tough. You know, um, and you know, would you mind sharing like what? your numbers look like for how much revenue that you've you've brought in for the company you work for now or over the course of the last few years yeah so i've done plus or minus million in revenue for my companies in solar we're doing averages around 20 30 grand a contract value so if you think about it we're basically selling cars to these people <laughs> you know we're putting cars on their roofs selling yeah. it to them. <laughs> so it is a high high ticket item people don't realize that we're able to save them money but mm -hmm. we're selling thirty thousand dollar con contracts stack up pretty quick yeah. So yeah i'd say plus or minus a million yeah it's it's very impressive you know like it's impressive to me and i think that you know solar is definitely an industry where like the contracts are worth a lot more but it's still a huge accomplishment and, and it's awesome to see you have success i know that you know, going forward, you're going to have a lot more success like that too. So that's yeah. awesome. So like, you know, it's interesting because like what we've been learning at the Tanx Growth Con here is that a lot of these, you know, billionaires we've been meeting and multimillionaires, um, they're talking a lot about things that contribute to their success. So like, you know, looking back on your journey from when you started to now, like what, what would be like some of the biggest factors that played the biggest role in achieving the success you've had so far? Yeah. So something I've realized is, uh, and I've talked about this before, but if you're afraid to spend money, then you're not going to make more money. I can't remember where I've heard it, but someone said that the phrase, scared money don't make money. Mm. <laughs> so if you're scared to invest money, if you're scared to invest in yourself, then you're not going to increase in what you're earning. I think that's a huge thing we've learned when we've been here at the 10X Con. And so as I've started to see more success, the natural thing is, oh, I'm just gonna keep my money. I'm not gonna do anything with it. I'm gonna save it away and do it. You know, your mom and dad taught you, just save all that away, lock right. it in the vaults, mm. don't do anything <laughs> with it, right? Yeah. But what I've learned is, as I've continued to invest in myself, invest in more opportunities, my money's just multiplied and I've been able to increase in my, in, uh, my sales. When I first started doing sales, I would go off to these seminars, I would like buy these weird online training programs. And there wasn't like an instant, um, you know, an instant switch that clicked. So a lot of the guys around me would be like, dude, why are you spending all this money in, in these <laughs> training programs? They'd see me leave for a weekend, and like, dude, that's not gonna do anything. Like, that's a waste of money. Mm. And sometimes I would wanna believe it, but I feel like as I've, invested more and more as I've done these little things and actually done the training and invested in myself I've started to see my sales go up and my my closing ratio increase in my company so if there's one thing that success has given me it's given me that opportunity because I've made more money and then success is just built upon success mm -hmm. as I continue to make more money and reinvest it in myself yeah just make smart investments with it so yeah that's that's awesome I think that you know, there's some really, really important things that he just said. I think that, you know, one of the things that sticks out is that, you know, even even though these people were, were maybe, like, judging you for what you were doing, you still continue to do it because you valued your education. You knew it was important. And, you know, you knew that as you achieve these different levels of success, you know, because we're, we're all on a different journey. We all, we're all at different levels, and that's okay. But as you took those stepping stones through the action you took on what you were learning, when you achieve 
a certain outcome or a level of success, it just kind of helps build momentum to achieve the next level and the next level and the next level, and you just keep going. It just becomes like a game, right? Exactly, yeah. So I think that, you know, what you hit on, like, super, super important. So, you know, now that you're at a point where you're at, you know, you definitely want to grow, um, you know, your brand and, and what you're doing and, and be more successful so that you can, you know, live the freedom, you know, have more opportunity and help others. Um, you know, what kind of, you know, but if we're talking about right now, what kind of opportunities have you seen um, come to your life from the success you've achieved so far that maybe you've always wanted when you started out? Yeah. So something that I've really been able to enjoy as I've had more success is getting a mentor or a coach. That's another huge thing that people don't want to invest in. Mm. But let me tell you, if you don't have someone that's keeping you accountable, if you don't have a coach that you're doing, and you're not going to find a good coach unless you're paying them, I mean, really, is you if you want real value, you're going to have to pay to get real value. Mm. Something that I've seen. You can only do so much with free material and free coaching. So that's something that I've been able to get as I've been more successful. I've been able to hire coaches in my life. I've been able to get more specific training in sales and just general uh, ventures that I'm trying to accomplish. I've been able to create that revenue and then invest in coaching for myself. So I think that's been a game changer for me, just finding a coach hmm. and then just like I said with the last question, just not being scared to invest in myself and just find someone that will hold me accountable. And it's just going to, if I don't do what I'm going to say, the coaches I hire, they're going to be like ripping me apart. Because if I want to, <laughs> if I want that growth, I mean, I got to have the, the, you know, tenacity to get a coach that'll really push me and really hold me accountable for the things I'm doing. Mm. So I think that's been a huge game changer for me. Yeah, it's interesting. I think that, you know, it, it's easy to be reluctant to do that, I think, you know, it's, you know, it, it's money, and, but I think, you know, it's, it seems like it's, it's been a very powerful resource in getting you to where you're at, and now, you know, because you've experienced that, you're going to continue to have a coach to, to help push you along, you know, so yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. You look at any great person that's done anything, I mean, Michael Jordan, any great entrepreneur. I didn't realize this at first, but almost all the greats, they have coaches that that are coaching them. Any great sports star, entrepreneur, speakers, just anyone great, they all have coaches behind the scenes. So mm. we see what they do, but we don't realize that they're getting all this, you know, exclusive coaching behind the scenes. So I think it's a game changer for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's awesome, yeah. So we're going to transition a little bit now, you know, you, your background is in sales, you know, you've, you've been quite successful so far and, you know, obviously realize that, you know, you're going to continue to learn and grow, but, you know, what I've kind of been learning a lot about and realizing lately is just the importance of sales in every area of business and how that plays a role because I think it's easy to, un to get, you know, believe this misconception that, you know, sales is just when, um, you know, just involves the door-to-door, -door, direct sales type of thing, and th there's no broader perspective of the fact that sales skills plays an important role in just everything that we do. You know, yeah. if, if if you want a customer to buy something from you, if you want a customer to, if you want to make money, you have to know how to sell, right? Yeah. So, maybe you could share with us, like, what are some of the most powerful um, sales tips that you could give us to um, help us with with sales and, and ultimately growing our business? Yeah, it's a good question. And so first of all, if you haven't read Sell or Be Sold by Grant Cardone, you mm. gotta get you gotta get your hands on that book. Because yeah, that's, that's book. gonna change your perspective <laughs> about all sales people. So he will convince you that we got seven billion people on this planet, we're all sales people. If you didn't know that, read that book. He's going to convince you within the first 10 pages yeah. that every one of us, regardless of what we're doing, we're <laughs> salespeople. But yeah, as far as sales skills, I mean, you can get super specific. Obviously, entrepreneurs are probably going to be using it a little bit different than someone that's in direct selling. But a couple of things that apply to everyone that took me a long time to learn is number one, always agree 
So this is something that's huge that I've, took me forever to learn. Our natural, I think, human response, or at least mine was, is someone says something and you kind of want to a lot of times disagree. I got married about a year and a half ago and my wife, when she says something, sometimes I want to just tell her what to do. I want to disagree with it naturally, <laughs> but I got put in the doghouse quite a few times <laughs> trying, trying to do that. So she helped me realize it too. But always agreeing with your clients, your customers, the people around you. I mean, it's a basic principle. It's in how to win friends and influence people. It's in almost any su success book you can find. If you don't agree with someone and find that common ground, you're never gonna get them to see things on your side of you. Mm. Regardless if they're saying something completely ridiculous, you gotta agree with it, and then you gotta introduce whatever your idea is. Mm. So always agreeing is huge. And then a second thing that took me forever to learn is always whatever you're saying, whatever you're proposing to your clients, to your customers, to whoever you're talking to, you gotta write whatever you're saying down. You gotta write your proposals down. You gotta write your ideas down. I mean, everyone's played that game of telephone where you whisper something in an ear and then it goes around to five people and it's completely different than what it started. Same thing in sales and business. If you're not writing down your proposals, if you're not writing down what you're saying, it's gonna get changed, you're gonna get yourself in trouble, and people are just gonna forget. I mean, we all forget mm -hmm. what we're told. So writing out what you're doing, writing out your proposals, and then having that accessible to your customers, to your clients, I think that's huge. I mean, whatever you're doing, whatever kind of marketing or sales you're doing, just getting them a written proposal. Mm -hmm. Those are two things that seriously, I probably didn't learn them until maybe the last six months. Mm -hmm. I've been doing sales now for what, four years or something? Yeah. So, so yeah, those were two huge things. So don't make those mistakes. Yeah, no, thanks for sharing. I think that, you know, there, there's so many there's so many aspects to sales, right, to, to master. And, you know, we always got to be working on those things. But, yeah, I think that, you know, it's cool to see how, you know, because every, every salesperson goes through these different experiences and it's cool to hear, you know, over your four years, those are two things that really stuck out to you and made the difference for you, you know. Yeah. So that's cool. So, um, kind of shifting gears again a little bit, um, but you know, we've been here at Tennis Growth Con for the last two days now, we've got one more day left, which we're super pumped about, of course. Tennis, baby. Yeah. Tennis, <laughs> do it. Um, but, you know, we come here, or, or, or maybe, you know, we've set goals at the start of the year, and, you know, we've, we've come to this conference with goals, um, but maybe you can talk about what are some of your future goals that you have and um, even talk about how being here at the Tennis Growth Con has um, made you change some of them or you know improve some of them. Maybe you can share some of, the, some of those. Yeah, for sure. And so yeah, I think you know, me and Jordan were talking before this is I think one of the biggest takeaways we've gotten during this whole event is just getting rid of the limiting beliefs that are in our head. Every every obstacle we create is in our head first. So something that I've realized is just do the thing that I most fear, attack it as quick as I can, and then just get those limiting beliefs out of my head. So with that being said, I mean, I have a lot of limiting goals in sales. I mean, I want to clear definitely six figures in sales. I want to keep getting that million. I want to, you know, triple quadruple that within the next year I think it's definitely possible and then yeah I just want to put myself out there obviously spread my message more to the world help people break through limiting beliefs like I said when I first started sales I saw you know tons of people just fall out tons of people not have confidence in themselves and I think it comes from something deeper mm -hmm. um, that you know people don't have confidence in themselves so they give up on their dreams, they give up on what they want to achieve. So that's what this event has helped me realize is, yeah, 10x my goals, don't be afraid to set it high. Obviously not ridiculous, but set it high that it feels uncomfortable setting the goal, feels uncomfortable just saying it, but I'm trying to 10x those goals and 10x the income. 
and apply it in every area of my life. So. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome, and it's yeah, it's it, it has been an incredible experience, and and definitely, you know, even just opened our mind that little bit more, you know, than from you know where it was before we came in, right? And I think that it's. It's definitely a process to keep expanding our minds, but you know, just hearing it from these powerful people and seeing it as a trend of what they're saying just points out the importance of you know focusing on the mindset and really extending our goals beyond you know not and not just saying them of what we think we can achieve based on what other people have achieved, right? Yeah. You know, there there really are no limits to what we can achieve, but we've got to get past those mental barriers to, to really push past it. So, yeah. yeah, thanks for sharing some of those goals and um, and everything. And, you, you know, you were kind of talking a little about, you know, sharing your message more with the world and everything and, and really starting to, you know, build a brand, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, people watching right now, where can people find you and, and learn from you? Yeah. What are you, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good question. Sometimes I wonder myself. <laughs> ask myself every day (laughs) but yeah and so I'm trying to get myself out there more on social media just getting started in a lot of different mediums but trying to build up more and more so I mean I'm on all the social medias don't have a huge I mean haven't had it built up but what I'm focusing on right now is I'm getting started in my podcasting so my podcast is gonna launch here in the next month or so I'm just getting the the first, you know, four or five episodes finished up so I can launch it on iTunes. It's going to be called Mindset Mastery, so you'll be able to find that and definitely get that launched soon. And then, yeah, just social, me- social medias, Facebook, Taylor Armstrong, Instagram, Taylor Storm, Snapchat, try and post on there. Pretty consistent. So, uh, yeah, that's where I'm at for now. Obviously trying to know I need to get myself out there more on mm-hmm. all those social medias, but it's kind of where I'm getting started. And, yeah, I'm just trying to set my goals high for all of it. When I was in scout c- camp as a kid, they taught us the smart goals <laughs> of setting the realistic goals. But right. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned from this 10X con, <laughs> that, that's bull crap, man. Do not, do not set realistic goals. Yeah. You've got to set your goals high. Set them so they scare you. Yeah. and set them so you're going to take action. Mm-hmm. I know there's a million times in my life where I've set my goals small, and then I've lost all motivation to even do anything. So that's probably why I didn't do very good when I started in sales, because I set my goals small just so I could have a little bit of success. If I would have set them high, then I think I would have achieved a much bigger target. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing that last thought there. And I think... Yeah, that's going to wrap things up here today. Um, I really appreciate you, you know, being here and, and willing to do this interview. I, I hope that you guys watching right now have received a lot of value from this video. Um, if you guys have any other additional, you know, questions or comments that you'd like to share, um, whether that's, you know, questions for Taylor, I can have him answer those. Or if you have any other thoughts and, and how this inspired you or helped you in any way, please leave them down in the comments. Um, But until next time, guys, thanks for being here. And if you like these kind of videos, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to this channel. But if you'd like to see more content like this where I do interviews with some people, also let me know. I'd love to hear that and I enjoy doing these. So thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.